What if someone was willing to do the time for the crime that you committed? Would you be loyal to them? Stay tuned to learn about the death row volunteer. They try to change us from the outside in, and that's never going to work. Because I know that no matter how hard and cold the exterior may seem, I know that inside we hurt. So we just want to come and share some hope with you and let you know that we love you and that Jesus loves you beyond anybody in this world. We're not here today to judge you or condemn you. We're here today to tell you that we love you and we understand the situation that you're in. Hello, I'm Jason Bradley. Just want to thank you for joining us once again, as you always do. I'm here with my brother Lemuel Vega, my brother in Christ, Lemuel. We've experienced a lot together behind bars. We get out the same day, but we've been able to minister uh, quite often behind bars. But you're still getting packages into prisons. Thousands correct? and thousands of packages. You want to talk a little bit about that death row volunteer? Oh, absolutely. You know, we've all been handed down a, a death sentence as the human race. Amen. You know, once, once sin entered the world, we entered into that death sentence. But thank God that he sent his only begotten son to die for us, his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins so that we could have a shot at eternal life. Amen. It's a promise. It's a promise. It says in John 3:16. It says, for God so loved the world, uh -huh. humanity, that he gave his only begotten son, the death row volunteer, uh -huh. that whosoever, I love this brother, whosoever, every nation, color, kindred, tongue, people, that's inclusive. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that's all of humanity, that whosoever what? Believe. Believeth in him, should not perish. perish, but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of the gospel is this, for God sent not his son into the world to, to condemn the condemn world. Condemn the world. Mm -hmm. What condemns us? Sin. sin. We're yeah. born with this handicap called sin. So yep. it's sin that condemns us, separates us from our heavenly father. So God sent his only begotten son, death row volunteer, mm. I love that, into the world, but that the world through him, death row volunteer, uh -huh. might be saved. Yes. What yes. is sin? Transgression of God's law. God's love letter to humanity. He wants us, he beckons us, he woos us to follow him uh -huh. and his transgression of the law. Yeah. Um, there's an analogy that I've used, we've used in the past, and we actually have a volunteer, a group of inmates uh, to come up, but uh, let's, Let's let's talk about sin. Let's okay. talk about the variations of sin. Okay. So now, so what do we 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 have sheets here? We have sheets. We okay. have three sheets. We have three different colored sheets. We'll uh -huh. go ahead and put that one up there. Okay. Um, and then I'll hang this one up there. And this is to represent the degradation of sin. So in our world today, we rate sin. Uh, if you if you did something really bad, you go to prison, you go to death row, if, if you didn't do something so bad, if you just drunk driving, then you then you go to jail just for a little bit, or you get something called probation or something. So in our world, we vary in sin. We give it different names, different meanings. But Jason, if you were going to say that one of these, these all represent sin, if you were to say that one of these is worse than another, which one would be the worst? You know, that's, that's a hard thing because the wages of sin is death. Amen. So all of them are, are the same. If we look at Romans chapter 6, verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So whether it's the individual that killed somebody and it's on death row perhaps, or whether it's somebody that's just uh, robbed a bank or robbed a Brinks truck or whatever, or whether it's a white collar person that their life is perhaps and they think it's not so bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, society might say this is the worst. Mm -hmm. Or, or this might be second, this might be third. But you know what, brother? The Word of God said that... The wages of sin are death. It's death. Yeah. And, and yeah. the volunteer, the willing volunteer, death row death volunteer. Death row volunteer, yes. Now, I want to share something with you, though, too, because it says 
In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So there's hope. There's a transformation. There's a transformation. How did that transformation take place? Because we got a lot of problems right here. Oh, we have a lot of problems, but we also have the problem solver. And the problem solver upon the cross of Calvary bought humanity back. Yes. That whosoever believeth in, in him. him not perish, Did not perish, but have everlasting life. So he cleanses yes. at the cross of Calvary. That's the beginning point for all of humanity. Mm -hmm. yes. So the person that doesn't know Jesus, what would you say to that individual? Because you and I know that's the starting point. Uh, absolutely. We've tried to show the analogy to where his righteousness cleanses us. We were sentenced with a death sentence. Yes. Adam and Eve, our great grandparents. Mm -hmm. Death sentence was pronounced upon them. Yes. We were born with that problem called sin, and now Jesus came and died that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question, Lemuel. When you were, you know, living a life of crime and, and leading a life of crime and breaking the law and all of that stuff, did you have somebody that said, hey, I want to take your drug charge. Hey, I want to do your time. Hey, I want to I, I want to do the time for your crime. Did you did you have somebody who voluntarily went down to the courthouse and just said, "Hey, I'll I'll go to jail for him." No, all your homeboys, everybody say they got your back. They'll be there for you, and there was nobody there. Mm -hmm. And for all these people that are incarcerated, there's nobody there to put bread on their baby's table, shoes on their baby's feet, to make sure the electric bills paid. There's nobody there to take care of their people out here and there's nobody there to take care of them. Mm -hmm. But God meets us at the worst moments of our life. You know, Jason, I got a call from 3ABN and they asked us if there was this individual, he just gotten out of, out of prison and they wouldn't know if he could come and help Christmas behind bars. And I'm like, well, yeah, I guess. I said, no, I want to know a little bit about the story. And it's really amazing because 3ABN's been going up to the prison, mm -hmm. uh, local prison here, and they were doing services on a regular basis. And uh, we, wanted to take packages to that prison because they're already doing services and that's what we want to do. Um, and so we, we made 2,000 packages for that prison. But what we did is we invited each individual. We put 2,000 invitations, one in each bag, and we invited them to come out to the existing services that you folks were holding up, up at the prison. Mm -hmm. And this individual, he got that invitation and he started coming out to the services, but in his bag that he got the invitation, he got the book called The Desire of Ages. Mm. The Desire of Ages, he said he began reading that book. He said he had a third grade education, reading level, and he, and he couldn't really understand it. So you know what he did, dude? He got the dictionary out. So now he's reading The Desire of Ages in the dictionary. Wow. And then he began to understand how Jesus got his strength from his heavenly father. Mm -hmm. He said, I want to know more about this. So he went and he got a Bible. So now he's reading the Desire of Ages, dictionary, and a Bible. And his reading level went from third grade to 12th grade within about six months. And it was just from reading the Desire of Ages, the dictionary, and the Bible. Wow. You know, this individual came to the services. He got a little transistor radio, and he began getting 3ABN radio. Uh -huh. And that, that strengthened him and, and encouraged him. He made a decision for Jesus. And when he got out, he needed a place to go. Uh, he helped out here for a short period of time. And now, David, he's driving semi. He got his CDL license. He's, he's doing good. He committed his life to Christ. And uh, he's riding down the highways and byways of life now. But that's one individual that 3ABN has been able to minister to yes. physically on a weekly meeting through the airwaves of 3ABN radio mm -hmm. combined with Christmas Behind Bars receiving the book Desire of Ages. So, so God is not going to leave us or abandon us or forsake us. He continues to call all people. Mm -hmm. And so at this time that we live, sin, the remedy is at the cross. Yes. And there's hope. Uh, God sent not his son into the world to condemn us but that we might have salvation and life through him. Yes. Um, what would you say about the, the ministry at 3ABN? Because I know you folks are actively involved in prison ministry as well. Yes, I would say that, you know, 3ABN has been a blessing in my own, in my life as well in, in terms of growing my walk with the Lord. And that's that's our goal is to just point people to Christ. Yeah. We just want to point people to Christ. It's, it's the Holy Spirit that convicts and all of that and, and that 
uh, draws people to the to the Lord. So we just want to point people to Jesus. And that's how it is with Christmas mm-hmm. behind bars. You know, we take thousands of packages and, and, you know, we just pray physically. We do all we can do putting the packages together, but we just pray that when they open that package, that their, their life will be touched and encouraged for Christ. Amen. So we're not looking for numbers. We're not asking how many people have been baptized. Mm-hmm. We just want to encourage them for Christ. That's right. That's right. The seed has been planted. The seed has been planted. The spiritual material is going out and people are hungry for the gospel. And we're really finding that out uh, more and more as time goes on. People are trying to find an explanation for what is taking place in the world. Um, You know, with Christmas behind bars, we've been talking about Christmas behind bars and the impact that uh, that Christmas behind bars is having. Uh, But how do people get to check out Christmas Behind Bars? Let's say somebody wants to visit your website. What's they go your website? to christmasbehindbars.org. Okay. Christmasbehindbars.org. Email address is contact, C-O-N-T-A-C-T, at christmasbehindbars.org. So email is contact at Christmas Behind Bars. Website is christmasbehindbars.org. My name's Lori. I'm at the Boone County Jail, and I'm a, uh, a drug addict. In 2009, I lost my brother to a heroin overdose. I found him in my garage. In 2011, the father of my kids hung himself in this jail, actually. In 2014, my daughter hung herself. I found her. 2015, I found my father dead. In 2017, I found my mother dead after a heart attack. So uh, I've lost myself through that journey. I've lost contact with God. Um, to take you guys a time out to come there and, and to spread that word, I thought was huge because a lot of people just see us as criminals, you know, and that's it. But we're way more than that. We're moms, we're, we're people's children. We, we are still people. And I think um, it made us feel like that, everybody in the block. Like we couldn't stop talking about it. And we, um, we still talk about it today. And that was a couple weeks ago. I've lost my contact with, with God, but I'm getting it back. I'm definitely getting it back one day at a time. Jason, I want to tell you something. Newcastle Correctional Facility, 3,000 inmates. They told me they have a they have a regular suicide watch team. When someone's going to commit suicide, they put them in a cell, and an inmate sits outside that cell, and they're able to talk to them. If they want to talk, they're there to talk 24 hours a day. And what they told me, they knew Christmas Behind Bars was coming maybe four to six weeks in advance. And they said once they put that word out in the prison, they didn't have nobody on initiated to suicide watch during that time period. Why is that? Because they had something to look forward to. Mm-hmm. They knew Christmas behind bars was coming. We as Christians in this troublous time that we live, mm-hmm. we look forward to the soon return of Jesus. Amen. So we must hold on that that hope would supersede the problems that we face on a daily basis. Amen. And I, I think that story really speaks to our need for relationship as well. God created us to be social, relational beings. beings. And so we need that, that relationship. It's interesting that they have somebody out there 24 hours a day. We can go to Jesus 24 hours a day. We can pray to God 24 hours a day. 24 seven. Never too busy to, to hear from us. Death Row Volunteer, That's may right. we be loyal to him as he's been loyal to us. Amen. And thank God that he wants to save uh, as many as will believe in Jesus and, and repent. That's right. Whosoever believeth in him. Thank you. Lemuel, thank you so much for what you're doing for the cause of Christ and for pointing people to Christ. Yes. And we want to thank you for joining us. You know, if you haven't made the decision to follow Christ, make that decision today. God bless. Mm-hmm.